Alright guys, well imagine that. It is another gray, gloomy, rainy, yuck, depressing day here in the end times. Bugs in a jar farmer, we have stumbled into this gloomy Sunday morning, now Sunday afternoon. Good lord, is it already afternoon? That would be Sunday, October 3rd, 2021. So anyway guys, as some of you might have known, yesterday, shockingly at Counterpunch, I stumbled over this person who, uh, calling them a doomer chick, but actually it's a guy uh, going by the name of Nikki Reed. Don't know if Nikki Reed is for real or not, so... Uh, Anyway, I knew that the, the essay in Counterpunch had to be fairly tame from this person. So uh, I went over and spent some time in exile in Happy Valley yesterday. The name of Nikki's uh, website, Exile in Happy Valley. I, I love the, uh, already the, the dark irony of... <laughs> Exile, you know, meaning in Normieville. But uh, so I searched through, and we're going to bring you a little more uh, biting commentary on the American Empire. But before I do, I want to read about me, about me from Comrade Hermit. Comrade Hermit, parentheses, Nikki Reed. And uh, this is what how Nikki describes himself slash herself, whatever. <clears throat> Take it away. Comrade Hermit. I am a gender fuck Ted Kaczynski with a blog instead of a bomb. I make no qualms about my intention to destroy the American Empire from the comfort of my suburban spider hole. Art is the deadliest weapon at the revolutionary's disposal, and I fully intend to use mine to afflict the comfortable and comfort the afflicted. I am a former shut-in attempting to rejoin the outside world after years of self-imposed isolation. During my exile, I did almost nothing but read towers of books and watch the world go to shit just beyond my reach. I hope to impart my own twisted blend of homegrown wisdom upon the world through my blog, Ex, you know, Exile in Happy Valley, blah, blah, blah. I guess you could say I am something of a savant, a well-read philosopher with defunct coping skills that border on agoraphobic, but I am trying and getting a little better day by day. To say my views are a little unorthodox would probably be an understatement. I am a Christo-pagan agnostic, a bearded lesbian, a voluntary Marxist, keep it in the commune, a libertarian socialist, a gender-fluid Russophile, a pro-life feminist, a lifelong punk rocker, and the queerest panarchist this side of the rainbow. On top of all that noise, I am also probably the youngest Luddite in Pennsylvania. I'm pretty sure he was born in 1988. Uh, so whatever, 21 plus 12, 33 years old. Uh, I'm also probably the youngest Luddite in Pennsylvania, so all this social media shit is kind of a weird fucking trip for me. I am also an aspiring writer who worships at the graves of brilliant corpses like Hunter S. Thompson, Allen Ginsberg, Gore Vidal, 
Justin Ramondo and Alexander Cockburn. Love that name, Cockburn. Not to mention the feet of my heroes, Kurt Cobain, Courtney Love, Che Guevara, Emma Goldman, and whoever Frida Kahlo, K-A-H-L-O is. I am nothing compared to these giants, but from their granite shoulders, I can snipe the occasional pot shot at the parades of the powerful, metaphorically speaking, of course. Long story short, I am here. I am weird. Get used to it. <laughs> I'm gonna have to, uh, I'm gonna have to interview Comrade Hermit. I think I need to, uh, seek out Comrade Hermit in Happy Valley, Pennsylvania. I think he, she would be a hoot of an interview, but anyway, we're going to go back to May 9th, 2021. I, I've sifted, he has like hundreds of uh, essays going back to the year 2015, so I just read all his essays last night from 2021 and picked out this one from May 9th. <clears throat> We need to talk about destroying America. Dearest motherfuckers, we need to have a serious talk about America. I have been tap dancing around this subject for years like a gender-fucked Shirley Temple, but I think we have come to the point where we cannot afford to mince words anymore. America is a runaway empire, and it needs to be stopped. For a long time, I have openly held out hope that the inevitable collapse of such a gargantuan killing machine was upon us, and that all peace-loving anarchists like me really had to do was prepare for the inevitable and wait. While I continue to maintain that any superpower as bloated and unforgiving as the American Empire is certainly doomed to collapse, I have come to fear that our elites are savage and depraved enough to take us all down with them in a colossal mass suicide by Cold War. We cannot afford to fuck around anymore, folks. We need to have a serious conversation about destroying America once and for all before it destroys us all. It's important that we cleanse ourselves of any illusions pertaining to this country of ours. America was born an empire, and it will die an empire. There is no once great nation to be saved. This creature began as a hideous mistake at best, and a despicable conspiracy at worst, as flagrantly politically correct as I clearly enjoy being. Those wokesters in the critical race theory market are right about at least one thing. This country's foundation was not built on freedom and liberty. It was built on conquest, rape, slavery, and genocide, and the hustle never stopped. Over the centuries, we have evolved from smallpox and cotton to gunboat diplomacy and manifest destiny to a new world order and American exceptionalism. This is all part of the same narrative of power and violence. We dropped two nuclear bombs on Japan as they attempted to surrender. We bombed bridges in Korea and then machine gunned the survivors with babes in arms. We crippled half of Southeast Asia for generations with blankets of Agent Orange. 
We, tr we trained baby killers to rape nuns in Central America, and then we helped them to get away with their crimes. We carpet bombed miles of fleeing civilians on the highway of death in Iraq. We starved the survivors for a decade, and then we bombed them some more. Any one of these crimes should be sufficient enough to damn us all to hell. But it wasn't like we all took it sitting down. America, for all its sins, has a proud tradition of both individual and collective resistance to its own tyranny. We have had barracks raiding abolitionists race trading engine lovers, race trading engine lovers, starved and shackled Anabaptist war resistors, limp-wristed nudist transcendentalist, bomb-throwing immigrant anarchist, prison-dwelling democratic socialist, peace-loving old right isolationist, long-haired hippie freaks, draft-dodging peaceniks, empire-busting black nationalists, officer-fragging GI insubordinates, pink mohawk flag burners, rifle-toting American Indian occupiers, anti-nuke Catholic workers, low-riding Chicano anti-colonialist, state-smashing libertarian stoners, chain-loving communist metalheads, and even a few gender-bending gonzo muckrakers. And it is this renegade tradition of many renegade traditions that makes America the place redeemable in the eyes of any deity but only if we collectively hold America, the government, accountable before it is too late. And that clock just keeps ticking louder and louder with each preceding presidency. The last three presidents, Obama, Trump, and Biden, not to mention uh, the, how many before them, have all devoted their foreign policies, or at least attempted to, to confronting the last governments capable of resisting our rapacious global advances. Iran, Russia, and especially China. This campaign accelerated with Obama's pivot to Asia, continued with Trump's blustering trade wars, and now appears to be approaching a fever pitch with the Biden regime's great power competition. All of this insanity adds up to one sick reality. America is prepared for nuclear war with Eurasia. Those words sound insane, but just watch the seas, if you don't believe me, from the Black Sea to the South China Sea, which of course I have been predicting for the last five years will be where World War III kicks off, the South China Sea. From the Black Sea to the South China Sea to the Strait of Taiwan, America's naval forces are shadowing Russian and Chinese warships and daring them to strike first in the most provocatively obvious come-ons since the Gulf of Tonkin. We are surrounding the Pacific and the Arctic theaters with missiles and encouraging Yankee bitch states like Ukraine and the Philippines to throw the first punch. We are playing chicken with nuclear warheads and nobody is flinching. We have reached a fork in the road where our two options read destroy the beast or destroy the world, and America is most definitely the beast. 
it is high time that American anti-imperialist of all stripes embrace the reality that our government is the bad guy in this movie and we need to defeat it. I realize the risk I am putting myself in just saying something this incendiary out loud in today's hypersensorious online climate, but God damn it, it needs to be said. America must be stopped and Americans must be the one to stop it. I'm not saying we march directly from our computer screens to the barracks, but this is the conversation we need to be having. This world war that our leaders are openly and actively pursuing is a recipe for human extinction even more immediate than the cataclysm of climate change, and it needs to be treated as such. So, what do we do? All right. The first thing we do is ditch the melodramatic theater of electoral politics. All the money and energy that goes into campaigns of worthwhile candidates like Ron Paul or Tulsi Gabbard would be much better spent on creating grassroots movements in the model of Extinction Rebellion or BDS. We need to first educate the world, particularly the brainwashed first world, on the immediate existential threat of American imperialism. This means mass walkouts, forced occupations, direct action, and civil disobedience to be followed by a movement that preaches to drop out boycott and divest from the United States government and all major corporations doing business with her. We need to create decentralized stateless alternatives to everything from banking to healthcare so we can put ourselves in a position where we can afford to threaten the world's greatest economy with certain destruction without losing everything in the process. And while peace should always be the priority, we need to prepare ourselves for the very real possibility that posing even a peaceful threat to world order will put us in a position in which we may need to defend ourselves to survive. And that is what this is truly all about, survival. If we simply allow our government to exist in its current colossal form, it will continue to advocate for expansion because that is what empires do. It's, if it's not China or Russia, it will be India or Europe. America is the only superpower capable of playing this game to the brink of apocalypse, and it must be stopped by resistance from within if there is to be any hope for the world at large. America must be broken down into pieces small enough to coexist peacefully with the rest of the world, and Americans need this to happen before it's too late. This will likely mean radical decentralization and popular secession, an America unlike any we have ever seen before, but an America we can afford to be proud of. With peace, love, and empathy, Nikki. So, Nikki, I you know, brother or sister or whatever the hell you are, you know, amen, brother and sister all rolled up into your old bearded lesbian self. Uh, but, you know, dude, darling, whoever you are, you are preaching to the choir. But that's just what I'm doing, preaching to the choir. So it feels good, but uh, it ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen. We all know it. But, uh, <laughs> it, it, thank you for at least, uh, 
still having the balls to, to sound like a fucking lefty. Uh, thank, thank you, brother, sister, for not being afraid of those little limp dick, no bald lefties. You get out there and you be as politically incorrect as you want to be. It's these fucking little limp dick lefties uh, th that make me uh, every bit as fucking sick as, as these goddamn right wing cretins. But anyway, I've got to uh, change shirts now and tone down a little bit and go over there for uh, and see what that little eco pussy Sam Mitchell at Collapse Chronicles has to say about the state of the planet. I think that dude actually has two doomsday sermons over at Collapse Chronicles on this rainy day since I can't do anything else. Uh, but trust me, they're not going to sound anything like this. But anyway, get out there and enjoy your doomsday sermons while you still can. Bye, guys. Little dog, I have some bad news. Uh, there's two more sermons coming. Three sermons in one day. It's raining out there. You can't be chasing your damn chippies out there anyway. So you might as well settle in to sermons. We got two more coming. I know it. That ruins your day. Bye, guys.